Let me introduce Luigi Colombo uh, from Smart Odds. Um, hello, everyone. Well, thanks for the uh, very kind uh, um, introduction. So um, I'm here from SmartOds, uh, a um, company providing a statistical research and uh, modeling services. And uh, um, I'm going to talk to you about statistical models for um, sports betting. As you can tell from uh, um, the uh, title, I'm going to cover uh, some of the good aspects, so why um, you um, may want to um, have uh, and uh, invest uh, in a, um, having a good um, statistical model, essentially why you might want to uh, hire a quant. And uh, uh, the, the bad, some of the challenges is, uh, that uh, come up when uh, uh, we're developing uh, um, such a model. And, uh, and finally, the ugly, when uh, uh, we go and face uh, uh, real life, uh, when we face the market, uh, when we face the like of you, essentially, and uh, we find out where we can get things uh, um, really wrong. So um, from the uh, title, uh, you can also infer that uh, it's going to be a fairly broad view of uh, what statistical models are. I am trying to give a, um, a quant view of the gambling world, if you want, uh, whereby um, um, I'll, give a, a, um, uh, I'll share some of the experiences uh, that I had by doing, uh, um, uh, a, by being a quantitative analyst at SmartOds for uh, um, a bit more than 10 years now. And, uh, uh, but certainly I'll, I'll not be revealing uh, any of the uh, secret formula on, uh, 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 on this talk. However, I still hope that you'll find it, uh, uh, find it interesting. Okay. So, uh, the good. Um, as smart uh, um, we advise essentially on value betting. Um, it's a very simple concept, uh, and uh, I would expect that most of you are uh, doing uh, the same thing. And uh, the rule is uh, pretty simple. If the uh, market is offering uh, um, odds on a specific sports event, so let's say football for that matter, uh, uh, that are um, greater uh, than what the uh, probability of this uh, particular event should uh, imply, then uh, we have a betting opportunity. Now, uh, that is a very simple concept, uh, and uh, uh, in order to make it successful, uh, what um, we believe uh, we need is uh, uh, we need a, an accurate way of uh, assessing the probabilities. Uh, ideally, we want it to be um, more accurate uh, than uh, other players in the market, so more accurate uh, than uh, the guys like you. The other thing that uh, we really need uh, is uh, um, the facilities uh, uh, to repeat this process uh, uh, several times, many times. Uh, we don't have uh, a crystal ball, obviously. We don't know, oops, it's uh, not good. Uh, sorry. <laughs> My water is gone. Um, we don't have, uh, as I say, the crystal ball, uh, and uh, but they get away from here. Uh, we uh, we don't know who's going to win. We don't know which team is going to win by how many goals. Uh, um, we uh, what we have uh, is a, an estimate of the probabilities of these events happening. So even if the market uh, uh, might be completely mispriced uh, in a specific um, situation, uh, and then we place or advice to place uh, an incredibly valuable bet, uh, uh, well, that bet can still, can still lose. However, if we can repeat this process uh, many times, uh, eventually it is likely that we will end up uh, with a positive uh, bankroll because we can leverage uh, what, um, the, uh, our abilities of assessing probabilities uh, uh, better than the others uh, is. Um, so, clearly, this is a, a, a game of numbers, and uh, in a game of numbers, uh, it's good to use that. Uh, I'm trying to make a case of uh, uh, keeping a quant around, essentially. Um, so, uh, why is a um, statistical model um, uh, good? Uh, first point, uh, it provides a solid base uh, um, uh, on which a trader uh, can form uh, his or her opinion. No. Um, is, uh, uh, is a way of anchoring uh, your expectations uh, to, um, uh, uh, to a number uh, and trying to manage uh, uh, maybe what the impact of gut feel uh, might have uh, on uh, your operations. Um, so 
this is uh, um, something that actually you can also get from a good set of empiricals. And by a good set of empiricals, uh, I mean a set of uh, um, averages uh, or standard deviations or uh, percentiles, uh, um, uh, let's say a, a, a collection of uh, descriptive statistics uh, that are readily available and easily uh, 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 calculable. You know? However, what I'm going to try to do today is make a case that uh, a craftily, nicely, and properly designed statistical model is able to um, uncover some of the features that is uh, uh, in, in the data and that can help explaining uh, the observations uh, uh, better. The other good reason why a model is, uh, is good is uh, that uh, we uh, allow uh, to have replicable results. So, Given the same inputs, we are going to get the same outputs, um, putting aside the simulation and Monte Carlo based methods. So that generally, this is what, what we get. And I think this is key when it comes down to um, trying to be scientific uh, in, uh, um, in running a, uh, a gambling operation. So, uh, a replicable results also means that we can have a number of uh, uh, testable predictions meaning uh, I can actually populate back historically um, the predictions for uh, so many football games uh, and check how the model uh, would have fared um, uh, um, have had uh, this model available in the past. It's not necessarily a very, very fair uh, situation, uh, but uh, uh, it's still, still very useful uh, um, to have it. So, uh, statistical model, what it is. Uh, well, from the slides, you can already see that I'm going to present uh, a, 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 the Dixon and Colts model. Well, uh, first of all, what is a statistical model? Um, it's a, um, how to say, it's a collection of um, equations, uh, of mathematical equations, uh, that try to describe uh, the way in which the data is generated. Um, suppose that uh, uh, we are trying to um, mimic uh, uh, rolling a dice, uh, we know very well what are the probabilities of each phase. Uh, but in, uh, in football, uh, in soccer, uh, things are a little bit more complicated. The, uh, the process of generating data is made by 22 individuals uh, running around, following a football, uh, and trying to, uh, to score a goal. Uh, uh, something that makes it really, really interesting. Uh, I absolutely love football, uh, and, uh, uh, but uh, really hard to model. The, uh, 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 it is, so, uh, 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 let's say, the, what we're trying to do in here, then, is uh, trying to come up with a number of equations that describe uh, this data in the best possible way. So, here we start with a few equations. Uh, it's not going to be many, and I would also um, uh, suspect that few of you might already be familiar uh, with, uh, uh, with this. Um, the first thing is, uh, if we want to know uh, um, e e the uh, probability of uh, a, a, the home team scoring X goals uh, and the away team scoring Y goals, uh, uh, we use, or rather the Dixon and Colts model e is using uh, uh, this uh, Poisson distribution. Uh, actually, this is a slightly simplified uh, version of the model, and, uh, um, but the reason why I'm presenting this model is also because uh, it's clearly not a smart odds secret. And uh, this, um, in fact, uh, this year marks the uh, 20th anniversary since the publication of the Dixon and Colts model. It was 1997. And uh, I think that this paper uh, truly shaped uh, definitely the quant team uh, as smart odds, uh, definitely the gambling operations uh, 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 that we've been supporting as smart odds. Uh, and uh, I suspect that it has um, shaped also um, the, uh, uh, the gambling world, at least uh, within soccer and football, uh, but potentially as an inspiration in other sports as well. So it is also a way for me to celebrate this 20th anniversary. Um, I worked with Stuart Coles now for more than 10 years, and I can tell you he's a great scientist, absolute fantastic guy, 
and uh, I've met Mark Dixon uh, uh, many years ago, actually, and from the uh, brief encounter that, that, that we had, he seemed a uh, very smart guy, too. So uh, it is also a way for me to, um, uh, to show respect for these two uh, great scientists. So going back to the model, uh, what we have is a way to describe uh, the probability of uh, uh, X and Y, or number of goals for home <laughs> disaster, uh, of home and away team uh, scoring. So, uh, the, the model is conveniently parameterized by uh, one single number, uh, one for each team, uh, the scoring uh, uh, rate of the expected number of goals, this lambda h and lambda a. And uh, uh, we can see that this one, and, and this is where really the, the model design comes into play. So uh, this is uh, where we can finally try to describe some relationship that we think is particularly interesting. What we have is that the expected number of goals of the home team is designed to depend on the attack strength of the home team, the defense strength of the opponent, and a home advantage. Now, I know this is very simple, but I think this is part of the beauty of this model. We can really simply describe it, an obvious relationship that happens in football in mathematical terms. And we can build, as you can see, this happens both for the home team and the away team, and we can build this relationship between the two teams. When we observe a certain number of goals, in particular, say, the home team scoring two, three, four goals, we are going to learn a lot from that. We're going to learn about the home team ability to score, and we're going to learn about the away team ability to concede. And also, we're going to learn something about the home advantage. This is quite, quite nice. Um, the other key feature that was introduced in the Dixon and Colts model, it was the time discount. Essentially, uh, we know that teams change in time uh, and their ability is uh, improved or, or get worse uh, because of many reasons. So what we want to do is we want to give more weight uh, to more recent games. And that's how Dixon and Colts uh, introduced that. You can actually uh, uh, ignore uh, the long equation uh, in between brackets. Uh, what, what is really interesting is that parameter uh, phi that uh, discounts uh, uh, this observation uh, in time. So let's uh, uh, fit. Uh, what I've done is uh, I have used the uh, public available package uh, written in R called uh, uh, FB ranks. Uh, it's very uh, nicely done. And I've used some uh, freely available data uh, from footballdata.co.uk, which I'm sure you all, you all know. And then I have uh, used all of this, uh, and I get some rankings in here. And uh, uh, what we have uh, is, the, uh, is the output of this package. So it's not necessarily how we use it as smart but it is, uh, it is close enough to give you an idea. Um, we get the uh, attack and defense parameters, uh, and, uh, which are, are telling us something about the strength of the teams. Uh, we get uh, some information uh, 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 about uh, also the total ranking. Now, uh, the author of this package uh, came up with a, a way of uh, calculating a rank, which he calls total, and essentially is a relative measure of strength um, uh, relative to a median team or average team, if you want, which in this case is uh, Swansea. Um, you can see that this ranking is already quite highly correlated with the uh, position in the, uh, in the league. And in this case, uh, I've used only the data from all of last season, uh, plus uh, uh, what happened in this season in the Premier League uh, up to the 16th uh, of October. So even though it's not actually using uh, a, an awful lot of data, it's already producing something that is quite agreeable, which I think is uh, very remarkable. So 16th of October 2017, um, the reason why I chose that uh, is because we looked at a simple example of uh, uh, when, uh, uh, in particular, uh, Craig Shakespeare and Kerman got sacked. Uh, now, uh, the, here is the story. The, um, um, 
essentially they both get sucked a um, um, few days one um, after the other. So, but the perception was that uh, somewhat uh, um, a Shakespeare has been uh, a little bit unfortunate, a little bit unlucky. Um, why is that? It's because uh, uh, to some extent Leicester uh, had a, a number of really tough opponents uh, on the lead to um, his uh, 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 day where he, he got sucked. Uh, and uh, while the same story, the same hypothesis, uh, seems uh, less uh, plausible uh, for, uh, uh, for Kerman. So given the schedule of games, uh, um, uh, have they been equally uh, unfortunate? Interesting question, I, I don't know, but it seemed like a, a, a nice, nice thing to play with. The way I went about doing this, uh, it was to look at and compare uh, the Dixon and Colts model uh, with a, uh, an empirical uh, approach. And, uh, and in particular, uh, I'm going to build uh, an empirical approach uh, that mimics Dixon and Colts, uh, but that leaves out uh, a key feature. So this is how I went about it. Um, I took an average of the difference between a home and away goals for all of the data in the Premier League from last season and this season. So same data as the Dixon and Coles model. I have subtracted this estimated home advantage from the home goals in such a way that I could deal with both of them on equal terms. And then finally, I went to calculate an uh, alternative estimate of the attack and defense parameters, uh, uh, looking at the average number of goals that each team uh, scored uh, and uh, uh, the average number of goals that each team uh, considered. So um, I repeat that again. I take a weighted average, so discounting in time, for all the goals, uh, the average goals scored by each team and the average number of goals considered by, by these teams. We will want to do some predictions based on the Dixon and Coles and the empirical methods. And the way we're going to do is to, again, mimicking uh, the uh, Dixon and Coles using the Poisson distribution uh, and combining the attack and defense from the home team and the away team uh, in a very similar way. So what's the difference between the two approaches? Is uh, um, essentially when we are making predictions, uh, they look very similar. We are accounting for the opposition. No? When instead we are estimating these parameters, uh, we're using a different approach. In one case, in the Dixon and Colts, uh, we are controlling uh, for the opponents, uh, while uh, in these uh, 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 um, empirical methods, uh, we're not. We're just looking how many goals they, they score, how many goals they considered. So what um, should we um, expect? Now, if it is true that Leicester really had a tough sequence of opponents at the, more recently, let's say, at the beginning of this season, we would expect the empirical model essentially to underestimate their strength. Dixon and Coles is saying, well, if you are playing against really tough opponents, I am going to control for that. I am going to allow you to score a little bit less I'm going to allow you to concede a little bit more, and I'm not going to punish you that much. The empirical models, however, what it's going to do is going to say, I don't care who you played against. You just conceded a lot of goals, and you didn't score many. So if we use these two models, what we would expect is the empirical model to underestimate the um, uh, uh, to underestimate Leicester. And uh, if I, uh, the, the game um, uh, after the 16th of October, uh, uh, it, it was uh, at Swansea. And uh, in fact, uh, if we look at the difference between uh, the Dixon and Colts model uh, and the empirical approach, uh, uh, what we get is that the empirical uh, uh, massively underestimate compared uh, to the Dixon and Colts uh, uh, model, the probabilities. Now, um, can we really draw any conclusion? Well, I would say that a cursory look at the recent results would, be, would provide evidence to, to, to sack the manager. But really, that probably was a little bit unfortunate. Because if we had controlled for the series of teams that they played, and I think they had Manu, Chelsea, Liverpool, all at the beginning of the season, then it probably their performances would have not been that, that bad. 
in the Everton um, Arsenal game, so in the case of Coman, however, right, what we get is that the win probability so they end up being very similar. Now, I actually think here I got very lucky with this example. Uh, I mean, it's uh, it, it almost a bang on, but it kind of proves the point of, uh, of saying that uh, by uh, 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 taking into account opposition, so we can get different results. And, uh, However, in the case of coma, we can say that the historical average was actually reflective of their strength, was actually reflective of the quality of their opponents, and it's somewhat the same argument that he, that Koeman was a bit unfortunate, is not really plausible compared to, uh, to Shakespeare. Um, this is not what we do as smart odds, really. We don't uh, have a model for optimal time to sack a manager, and uh, that's quite good for a, for a couple of teams. And, uh, but I think this example uh, it actually shows why, by building a specific structure, uh, we are able to uncover features that simple averages don't, don't give us. So that's, that's an example of the, uh, of the good. Uh, now, uh, how about the bad? Um, the first thing that is bad about modeling uh, is the data. I could be spending, uh, I think, uh, hours talking about data, and uh, uh, it would be quite boring for you, so I won't, I won't do that. Uh, but it really boils down to uh, getting the data, uh, passing it, uh, matching it, uh, uh, checking it and fix it, uh, lots of errors out there, uh, and uh, uh, merging the data. So even if you're using, uh, uh, as we are, some really quality providers of data, uh, we still want to merge them uh, together in order to create unique data sets. Uh, well, that is an expensive uh, thing to do and it's quite, quite hard. And, uh, and then we need to quit it and we need to load it. Uh, and uh, uh, all of this, uh, we haven't even started doing a model. But, um, so if there is one good thing that I can wish for uh, is uh, for uh, either the big players in the gambling world uh, uh, or, or someone to come up with a way of uh, a, a give unique identifiers to each team, events, uh, players, uh, and make my life and probably the life of some of you uh, much, much easier. Enough about the data. Uh, challenges in the analysis. Um, analysis is fun. It's a lot of fun. It's probably why I started doing this job in the first place. So it's actually quite peculiar that I put this into the bad category. So, and, uh, uh, but it is also very challenging, uh, and I'm going to uh, talk about a couple of situations where I, I think it's, uh, uh, it shows how um, uh, important it is to have a rigorous approach to, um, these, uh, uh, to building models. Um, we'll use an example. Let's extend uh, Dixon and Colts to um, a, uh, all of English football uh, rather than just the Prem. So this is the model as we had it before, same attack and defense, but let's think about the home advantage. Um, should this be um, uh, just one home advantage for all of England? Um, should we have a competition specific home advantage? Should it be for Prem and one other one for Champ and so on? Um, should it be team specific? Meaning, uh, you know, every team has got a different, uh, 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 different ground they're playing, uh, different uh, um, capacity, different attendance averages. Uh, a lot of good reasons why the home advantage could be different uh, from team to team. Or maybe something in the middle uh, that is more likely to, uh, to work. Um, what is nice about the Dixon and Colts model uh, is that actually uh, something like this uh, would be uh, and it is relatively easy to test. So we can index the home advantage and fit three, four different models and then test diagnostics and see which of these models is performing better. And that gives the first caution, which is data dredging. Um, we found, or at least I found, that variations on a theme, so trying many possible ways of combining the home advantage, for example, is something that can actually lead to nowhere. A lot of very small improvements, and that is likely to bring to a model selection bias, where we end up selecting the model that is a little bit better than the rest, but maybe only on the, on the data that we looked at. And, uh, uh, and I think this is quite, uh, um, it can be quite bad, quite dangerous, uh, and a lot of rigor is, uh, is necessary here. 
The other thing I wanted to mention is time discount. Now, the home advantage, uh, um, should it be um, discounted at the same speed uh, as the team parameters? Uh, do we actually believe that the home advantage in football, in English football or in the Prem, uh, changes uh, uh, so quickly? Uh, maybe it doesn't change at all. Maybe it's something static. Maybe it's been the same uh, for many years. Uh, or maybe it's changing really, really slowly. Well, this is... Um, cannot be done so easily within this framework. The Dixon and Coles model doesn't allow us uh, to play with a time discount in different ways. And that's because uh, uh, the whole big equation uh, is, 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 uh, is discounted. The, the home advantage uh, is actually disappearing within the lambdas. So we don't have a natural way of doing this analysis. So what we do a smart thought is we come up with another um, a, a class, another family of models uh, that allows to introduce this uh, a, a, a natural approach to a time discount, for example. And in the same way, we do it for many other factors and many other things that uh, Dixon and Colts uh, uh, doesn't allow us to do. And that's a really big challenge, uh, partly from a uh, managerial point of view, is uh, do we actually spend a lot of time resources uh, to build uh, something uh, more complex, uh, uh, potentially better, uh, and, uh, uh, or shall we stick with what we have uh, and try to make it work? And uh, uh, I am of the opinion that uh, we always need to uh, move forward, uh, trying to get uh, better models, uh, better classes of, of models, uh, and, uh, and not stick with, with what, what we have. Uh, however, that uh, often uh, turns out to be a long investment uh, with little uh, uh, coming out of it, which is, uh, which is quite unfortunate. So these are a couple of, um, uh, I would say, difficulties that we have during, during the analysis. Um, the other difficult thing uh, is the uh, diagnostics. Um, how do you tell whether one model is better than the other? Um, as smart dots, we do it in uh, two, uh, essentially what we do is we look at two classes of diagnostics, uh, the traditional statistical ones, which uh, like the bias, root mean square errors, code rules, uh, which gives an idea of how accurate we are uh, at uh, uh, predicting what actually happens uh, on the pitch. And, uh, uh, and that is, that's one, one challenge on its own. The other class of diagnostics that we look at uh, is betting diagnostics. So if we use a simple strategy and uh, uh, we can simulate uh, uh, the, uh, uh, how the model would have performed against the market, and uh, we can look at uh, uh, return on investment, p &L, uh, measure of risks. The, the, the key thing is, uh, and we have this discussion, uh, endless discussions about this, uh, is that um, there is no one way of doing it. They provide us a slightly different view, so a more absolute uh, uh, performance measure uh, when we're looking at the traditional one and a more relative one uh, relative to the abilities of the market, of yourselves, uh, uh, to um, uh, predict the same thing that we're trying to predict. The ugly, and uh, uh, so finally, we, we had these models, we go into the market, uh, and uh, well, first of all, I can tell you that uh, we cannot rest uh, on our past uh, uh, results. Uh, it's, uh, it's a continuous process uh, of improving uh, what we have. We have to keep improving uh, our models. Uh, it's rush. Uh, absolutely rush against the people like yourselves who are trying to do exactly the same. And uh, there are novel uh, approaches to, uh, uh, to modeling, novel approaches to betting. It's an industry that is uh, absolutely evolving at an incredible speed. So we need to keep uh, uh, improving. So I ask myself, is well, everyone says uh, that the market keeps getting efficient, uh, but what does the data say? Um, the answer is I don't know. Uh, I had this idea way too late in the preparation of the slides, and, uh, but I still thought it would be useful to have a quick look at what basic data would suggest. So I took the uh, 1x2 odds um, and, uh, for all of the English Prem since uh, uh, 2000. I've calculated uh, a measure of accuracy, the, the log score, and then I have uh, smoothed uh, this uh, average uh, over time. And this is what we get. A nice, uh, nice graph, and uh, which uh, tells us uh, that uh, um, it looks like the market got really efficient uh, between 2000 and 2010. There was an absolute spike, 
Um, for those of you who were there at the time, I would say uh, you probably experienced it, you've seen that, uh, and I'm not surprised to see that. Then somewhat, the data suggests they kind of tail off, uh, and, uh, and I wonder whether this is, uh, 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 and this is something that I was uh, uh, predicting. I thought that actually um, that efficiency now is almost uh, getting to, um, to, uh, to an end and uh, we're reaching a limit. And uh, surprisingly, maybe uh, the last bit of the, um, uh, of the data suggests that there might be an uptick. So perhaps uh, there is really a revolution going on right now where uh, maybe a more tech-driven uh, approach is, uh, and uh, much better uh, and uh, an aggressive platform where to bet on, like, like Matchbook and other places, uh, is probably going to make the market even more efficient. But as I said, I don't know. And uh, uh, um, probably um, we should be looking at uh, other indicators like uh, uh, over rounds, commissions, uh, volumes, uh, but I'm going to leave this uh, as uh, the topic for, uh, for another talk. But I actually thought it was quite, quite interesting. Yeah. Um, at the very end, uh, losing strikes, um, we have seen a few, and they're horrible, they're ugly, and uh, uh, very frustrating, I would say. Um, it, 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 we don't know um, um, a lot. Uh, it's really hard, in particular during those times, uh, to really uh, stay confident. Uh, there is uh, the, uh, the temptation uh, to either give up, uh, there is a temptation to put your, hand, uh, your head under the sand, uh, hoping for better luck. Um, but I, I think that we need to use those few things that we know about all of this, uh, about losing strikes. Uh, number one, um, probability theory tells us that uh, in a fair game, uh, a player uh, like, like me, like um, anyone individually, uh, uh, any one of you, um, uh, playing against uh, an infinitely rich opponent uh, is doomed, uh, is doomed to, to ruin in a fair game. Um, if you're placing negative value bets, uh, you're just going to make this quicker. Uh, you're going to um, suffer less, so you're going to suffer uh, for less time at least. Uh, and there is no strategy that can help you change in this. Uh, there are strategies that can definitely help you to deal with negative value bets uh, and, uh, and to do it in the most efficient way, but you cannot turn it into a profit. However, uh, if you have um, uh, a way of assessing the probability so that tells you that you have a positive value bet, uh, then strategy and money management uh, can help you in making this even more efficient. And the obvious example that comes to me is Asian handicap uh, uh, approach where uh, you're betting on odds that are around two, you go 50% chance more or less to win your bet, and uh, by the very nature of these things, uh, the turnover of money is such that um, uh, you will not face uh, a, a incredibly long, or it's very unlikely at least, uh, that you will face very long losing strikes. Compare this to a strategy uh, based on really long odds, uh, whereby you might have to wait a really, really long time uh, before that starts uh, paying off. And uh, it might still be a, 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 a valuable proposition. I'm just saying it's, uh, uh, it can be quite, uh, 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 quite hard. It can take longer uh, than the uh, actual uh, wealth and bankroll uh, may allow for. To close on a slightly more positive note, uh, um, a statistical model can help with all of this. Uh, like during those times, uh, we go back to our models, uh, we go back to our predictions, uh, we reevaluate uh, whether we do believe strongly that we got positive value bets, uh, and uh, we, uh, we look at uh, uh, the, the risk that we're assuming, okay? and we are able to change strategies uh, in a way to fit uh, our risk profile. And I think this is, uh, it kind of brings it back to the, to the, to the beginning of the talk, uh, and saying, you know, it's, it's good to have it, uh, even during these uh, uh, really horrible uh, uh, times, like losing streaks. And uh, that's it. That's all, folks. I am absolutely fine with questions, okay. yes. Can I just ask the question about, about football betting? Um, what, what do you think the real impact is of when a team has a you know, star player missing for a game. Say, for instance, where Spurs miss Harry Kane in a match. You know, what is the real impact of that? Is it significant or, you know, does it really not matter? Uh, no, I think it does matter. And uh, uh, the, the, the strength of a team is um, inevitably um, 
uh, dependent uh, on uh, uh, the uh, the players that, that the fielding. Uh, I so you know I think it does matter. Uh, what, what I think is is really hard to do is to quantify in that bit, uh, and uh, um, and there are many 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 difficulties. Uh, um, um, so even using uh, um, a fairly granular data sets uh, uh, where they can describe a lot what the player is doing. It, in particular, striker. Uh, so the goals, the shots, uh, uh, where they got it, them from, XG of those those shots, and all of this. Uh, um, once you're taking out of the um, of, of the team, uh, now you're going to replace him with with another player, yeah, uh, and and really that is not just a, a replacing a, a, a two independent uh, quantities. So what you have is that these other players uh, will interact differently uh, with, the, with, with the team. And uh, the manager might actually ask to play slightly differently. So a number of uh, standard metrics that evaluate uh, the, the best player, Kane in this case, uh, and the metrics evaluate his replacement, uh, might actually pose, uh, might actually seems to make the difference bigger than it really is. And that's one problem. The other one that I, I, I really have, and I think is quite, quite hard with it, uh, but then there is your opponent. At the moment that Kane is not playing, even your opponent is going to change his own strategy. So uh, again, I think just looking at uh, um, uh, simple metrics uh, or, or the performance of one player, uh, it's a, uh, um, it can be quite, quite a reductive way of, uh, of going about it. But I do think that some players make uh, a big difference, and I think Messi is a perfect example of a player that is off the chart for that. But probably so, so is Kane. Um, in your very first slide, you put up that a value bet was one where the chance of it happening exceeded apparently the odds offered. Um, in my experience, that isn't necessarily the case. Uh, for example, if you sometimes find that the odds are very much in your favour, you've got something wrong or the market knows something you don't. And sometimes the other way around. It also depends on the company you're looking at. Um, have you got any views on any of that? Uh, oh, yeah, I think I have simplified this uh, uh, massively. Um, uh, one of the discussions that we have very often is uh, um, when does it become too good to be true, for example? And, uh, you know, if you get 50% value, um, something is probably off. Uh, and uh, if I have to make a bet at that point, uh, I think I am the one who's wrong, <laughs> not, 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 not all of you collectively. So, uh, yeah, I think it's, it's, it's true. I, I think I oversimplified, uh, definitely. Um, at the same time, though, and uh, this is, is quite key, like knowing where we believe that the model is strong uh, is, quite, is quite important, uh, because there might be situations where a 50% value truly is a 50% value. And uh, I can think of some examples in the past. I think with, uh, uh, especially during the World Cup, uh, you, you might get the, the market moving uh, uh, wildly from one side to the other uh, and giving you value where you wouldn't expect it. So I think it's still possible, but by nature, I am very skeptical. And when I see that, uh, I, 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 yeah, I tend, uh, I'd rather have somewhere in between, uh, at least a minimum margin uh, and something that is not absolutely crazy. I feel far more comfortable with that. Um, when you've got a, a bet that you, so your model suggests, um, would you be likely to discard it um, if, say, it, dis it disagreed with your gut opinion, or vice versa, if your gut opinion said something, but it disagreed with your models? I say that probably I'm the wrong person to ask that question because uh, I, uh, I'm not a trader. Uh, and uh, uh, the few times that I actually try to do things by gut feel, uh, I, I always get it horribly wrong. Uh, it's it's uh, my own fantasy link with my friends. Uh, I, I really struggle <laughs> because I'm trying not to use that. So, and uh, it, the result is horrible. Um, so from my point of view, now, I mean, gut feel should not have a place. Uh, however, uh, I, I do, do think that when a trader uh, like, like yourself uh, has got really strong reasons why the model can be wrong, yeah, I, um, I think you should be, be listening to that. Uh, what, what I would suggest, though, is uh, to have good reasons uh, why you think that the model is wrong. Like just saying, yeah, I don't really fancy that number, I'm going the other side, that's probably, I would disagree with that strongly. But if you say, well, I don't know, 
Dixon and Cole's model. It doesn't know about records, for example. You know, we completely ignore that. Uh, and the last game had two records. Uh, well, probably the, 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 the prediction for the upcoming game is going to be somewhat biased by that. And you would be absolutely right uh, in adjusting uh, and moving away from it. So uh, yeah, probably I'm the wrong person to ask that question. Uh, but I do, I do appreciate it. there are situations where you should be doing that. Okay, thank you very much for listening. Thank you.